With this video, I will describe lessons I have learned from the ancients. For the most part, these lessons have come from or have been inspired by ancient Greeks. First up, memento mori. This means that you will die. Yes, you too will die. As I have pointed out in this space with a recent video titled, How I Knew I Failed, you've known since you were 12 years old, and probably before, that you would die. That everybody dies. And yet, we somehow became indoctrinated with the infinite growth paradigm, including the part that indicates we will live a long time. And not merely a long time, but forever. As I've already pointed out in this space, forever is a long time, especially toward the end. Not only can we not grow forever on a finite planet, but we cannot live forever as individuals, either. This is simple for a ten-year-old child to understand. The response of a typical ten-year-old child? Playing, as if there's no tomorrow. Expressing emotions of love, gratitude, and sadness. And yet, once we reach adulthood, we buy into the notion that love is to be held close, and seldom expressed. We stop expressing gratitude, and instead take for granted the hours, days, and weeks on this beautiful planet. We do not publicly express our sadness. After all, big boys don't cry, or so the saying goes. Memento mori. You will die. Your life will be short. How shall we respond? One way to respond is amor fati. Love your fate. My so-called smartphone informs me every day, several times throughout the day, to love my fate. It tells me with these two four-letter words, amor and fati, to love my fate. When I'm not loving my fate, as happens occasionally throughout my day, I remind myself that my presence on this planet was never guaranteed. In fact, the odds against any one of us assuming this physical form exceed the odds against plucking a single atom at random from the universe. And yet, here we are. Against the seemingly impossible odds against our physical presence here and now, here we are, here and now. As Oxford Professor Emeritus of Evolutionary Biology Richard Dawkins pointed out many years ago, quote, In the teeth of the stupefying odds, it is you and I that are privileged to be here, privileged with eyes to see where we are and brains to wonder why. Amor Fati. Love your fate. And if you find it difficult to love your fate, think about the billions of people on earth who have it much worse than you do. They are dehydrated. They are starving. They lack a decent human community. If you were able to drink water and eat food today, you are in a position of enormous wealth. If you are able to share food and drink with friends, your wealth is even greater. Amor Fati. Love your fate. Next up, a phrase inspired by the ancients, presum diem. You are no doubt familiar with the phrase carpe diem, which means seize the day. When I was on a long flight in September 2015, I made a mental note to look up the Latin phrase for squeezing the day. I wanted to encourage myself and others to squeeze the good living out of every day. The most relevant phrase I could find after my flight landed is presum diem. More than six and a half years later, I still frequently invoke presum diem. I still try to squeeze the good life out of every moment of every day. Sometimes I succeed. Some days are better than others. Finally, I pursue a life of leisure. I encourage others to do the same. Before you protest, please allow me to explain. As I point out in my 2006 book, Letters to a Young Academic, a life of leisure means something different today than it did several decades ago. Back then, a life of leisure meant doing the work you want to do. It did not mean sitting on the couch watching television and eating cheese doodles all day. Not that there's anything wrong with that. What it did mean was pursuing a life of excellence as you perform the work you love. That 2006 book, Letters to a Young Academic, includes these lines in the final two paragraphs. Quote, I launched this paper boat with a final bit of advice about the life of the mind. Never take it for granted, for it could be snatched away tomorrow. You are allowed to live a life of leisure, in the historical sense. You choose the work you do. Through the lives of your students, you experience life and death and the wonderful emotional roller coaster of youth. As such, you can choose to remain forever young, if only vicariously. You have opportunities to serve as a mentor, and if you are worthy and fortunate, somebody might endow you with that noblest of distinctions by calling you teacher. I have been worthy and fortunate. 
I was given numerous opportunities to serve as a mentor. I have been endowed with that noblest of distinctions by having many people call me teacher. I made the worst mistake of my life, so far, by leaving active service on the campus of a major university. Mistakes have been made, yet I still continue my efforts to facilitate learning. One of the ways I continue to educate the willing is with an audio course in conservation biology. A description and the ability to sign up for the course can be found directly beneath this video. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing to this channel. If you subscribe, please click the bell so you will be notified about future videos. Feel free to share this video, become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly though, thanks for watching.